10 things you weren't taught in Bible school. Number one, Satan is not an angel. However, he masquerades as one. Number two, Satan is not a metaphorical serpent, but is a literal reptilian dragon. Number three, Satan legally rules the earth through the legal curses of God's own law. Number four, Satan has been given legal rulership of the earth by God himself. Number five, Satan is a prosecuting attorney, undercover cop, police officer, and warden, all working in concert to imprison you on planet prison earth. Number six, Satan is a legal king over the earth, which is his kingdom. Number seven, the people of the earth are owned by Satan and are his children. You cannot sell your soul to someone who already owns it. Number eight, Satan is a gift giver and offers gifts in exchange for worship. Number nine, Satan and God are often confused even by Israel. Number 10, Satan is a God, not an angel, and is the God of this earth. Let me show you in the Bible. Thank you for watching I Believe X. All right, let's begin. Satan is not a metaphorical serpent. Okay, Genesis 3, 4 says the serpent said to the woman. And I know many times many people use the serpent metaphorically, but Satan is an actual dragon. Artifacts have been found in ancient Mesopotamia uh, around the Garden of Eden in that area where it's believed to be the Garden of Eden, but where the cradle of civilization is believed to have begun uh, in the Ur region, the Ur of Chaldeans, the, the Ur region of Abraham around that area. And as you can see here, uh, here are some of the uh, carvings that were done, some of the statues that were created um, uh, that depicted some of the humanoid slash reptilian species. So it's not a far stretch to believe that the serpent species exists, which they do, the reptilians uh, and the dragon rules this earth and all of the dracos and the reptilians, they rule this earth and they are a literal physical reptilian being. Okay, let's go on. Isaiah 14, 29 says, you were in, in Eden, the garden of God. Now, many people believe because the commentary says, says, or their pastor told their pastor who told their pastor, and they've read, always read in the commentary that, that Isaiah 14, 29 is actually the serpent, but it's not. Cherubim are not serpents. Cherubim are four-headed beings that are uh, that that are not the hybrid or not a dragon or a serpent species okay they are hybrid and there were many hybrids as you can see there was a seraphim there was a cherubim there's locust leviathan the bible is full of hybrids that have been created uh to serve god and also created uh as guardians but also around his throne okay but it's more more than likely that satan okay is a fallen seraphim that that is his body type Okay, now seraphim are actually dragons. Seraphim is, it's the, the word seraph is translated seraph or seraphim, but it's a Hebrew word. They didn't translate the Hebrew word. They used the Hebrew word instead of translating it. So 99.9% .9 of Christians don't know that seraphim are dragons. Okay, if you can look at the Greek, flying serpent, flying above the Lord where seraphim and seraphim are fiery serpents. Now, so in other places where it seraph is is used it's translated serpent but around the throne they didn't want to scare you they didn't want you to know that there are dragons around the throne of god and that serpents are in the presence of god okay but they are okay the seraphim are dragons literal dragons okay here's an actual depiction of what those dragons look like there are dragons that guard the throne of God. Satan is a dragon. A seraphim is a dragon. Okay. Now, Satan is not an angel. Most people think he's an angel. That's why they say, oh, he was the cherub. A cherub is a type of angel. No, Satan is not an angel. Okay. He masquerades as an angel, according to 2 Corinthians 11, 14. But Satan is not an angel. In fact, he has his own angels. 2 Corinthians 12, 7 says the angel of Satan. They, they like to translate it because they don't want you to think that Satan is angel. So they translate it messenger. But it's it's angel it's in the Greek it's angel, okay. But they chose messenger. So you see it most of the time. You see a messenger of Satan. No, it's an angel of Satan. Satan has his own angels. He's not an angel, but has his own angels. Revelation twelve says, and the dragon, who's a literal reptilian, and his angels fought back. Satan is greater than an angel, okay. As you're going to see here in Scripture. Let's keep moving forward. These are things they didn't teach you in Bible school, and things that they're afraid to teach you. They want you to think that there's these beautiful Cupid little babies around the throne of God, protecting the throne of God. No, there are dragons and Satan is a literal dragon. 
okay? Let's go on. Satan, in Job 1, it says the sons of God who are not angels, okay, they're gods. Okay, that's once again, they want, you, they want you to believe the sons of God are not gods, they're gods. For more on that, check on our message, gods. The sons of God, the B'nai Elohim, according to Psalm 82, are Elohim. He says, I have called you gods. Of course, then he rebukes them for their poor leadership, just like he's going to rebuke and he imprisons Satan for a thousand years. Satan rules the earth legally and he gives gifts to those who worship him. Luke 4 says, then the devil, Satan, okay, the devil, and then of course in Mark and Matthew it says, Satan, led him to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. I will give you their authority. He's a gift giver, okay? If you worship him, he'll give you, he'll give you all kinds of riches and fame. Okay, Hollywood's full of them. Over all these kingdoms and all their glory said, I will give you the authority over them for it has been relinquished or given to me and I can give it to anyone I wish. Satan rules the entire world. The world, the earth is a prison planet ruled by the reptilians and at the head of it is the prince, the dragon himself over his own species. Verse seven, so if you worship me, it'll all be yours. Satan will give you gifts if you worship him. Satan is a legal ruler and a prince. Watch this. Ephesians says the ruler of the kingdom of the air. Everything on earth that breathes air, that is his kingdom. Okay. He is the spirit who is now at work and those who are disobedient. The spirit. There's no difference in the Greek between this spirit and the Holy Spirit. The only difference is Holy Spirit is prefaced by holy, which means that the prevailing spirit, he, his spirit is in every one of his sons and every one that he owns and everyone who has been sold into slavery on this planet, this prison planet that he owns and rules as the jail warden, that it, all of us were born into slavery and were his sons until we've been translated and born again. Okay. We've been redeemed, not just from sin, but from Satan himself. John 14, 13 or 30, it says, I will say much more, but the prince of this world is coming. John 12, now judgment is upon the world and the prince of this world is coming. He is the prince and the king of all the kingdoms of the earth. Prince is really translated ruler, arch archon. It's generally trans translated ruler, but can mean king, can mean ruler, any type of ruler. It's a general word for ruler, but he is a king of the kingdom of the air. It is a kingdom and he rules it. He rules the entire earth. Satan is an undercover cop. Okay. As we just read in Luke four, it says all the kingdoms of the earth, as he said to Jesus, who did not deny that fact, all the kingdoms of the earth, he says, for they have been relinquished to me. Watch this. The word relinquished means handed over. God gave it over to him. Okay. Everything you have is in his power. He gave everyone who's born on all of the Adamites and all their descendants who were sold into slavery because of Adam, okay, have been given over to and been given to the rulership, not of not the angel, but of the God, Satan. Okay. Now this word relinquished means to be taken into custody. It means to be handcuffed and taken into custody. We were all born into a prison system, a prison jail, handcuffed into sin, born into sin ruled by the god satan who is the ruler of his kingdom which is the air which is the prison planet earth he re we were relinquished or abandoned even some scriptures say but we were taken into custody now watch this now when did that happen it happened in the garden genesis 2 in the middle of the garden there was the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil okay we had two choices we could depend on the life in the direction of the spirit of God and be filled with his spirit and led by his spirit. Or we could depend on our knowledge of the good and evil and try to be self-righteous. That was it. We had two choices. Now, Satan knew that if we tried to depend on ourselves, that he could take control of us. Okay. And the Lord God commanded man, you're free to eat from all of it, all the rest, of, except for the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And it says, watch this, but you must eat, not eat from the knowledge of good and evil. In other words, depending on what you know is right and wrong and then self-justifying yourself, which is self-righteousness. I'm a good person. I don't do this. I don't do that. I don't do this. We were never created to live like that, trying to be good, declaring we are good, boasting about how good we are and how we could live without God and don't need the tree of life, but we could depend on ourselves and be a God like Satan lied to us. And for it says, and then he said, for you shall surely die. Now, Satan question. He says, no, God knows that you'll become like one of us. And so at that very moment, Adam didn't trust God and trusted Satan more than he trusted God. At that moment, the spirit of Satan entered his body and he began, he, he was ruled by Satan from that point forward until Christ came. Satan rules 
all of the Adamites who are cursed from generations to come and who are sold into slavery because of what Adam did. We were sold into slavery by our ancestors and our slaves on a prison planet, which Satan is the God of and Satan is the warden of. Now, understanding this, we'll understand what Christ did. He redeemed us, not just from the curse of the law, but redeemed us from the cur curse enforcer and the God of this world, who is Satan, as we're gonna talk about more here in the future. Satan is an undercover jail warden. Okay, so this is what he does. Now, it says, Galatians 3.20 says, but the law has locked up everything under the control of sin. So we were handcuffed under the power of sin until we're released by another God, his name is Jesus, who referred to himself also in Psalm 82 with respects to him, him being referred to as God. Okay, now I'm gonna paraphrase this, uh, Galatians 3.22, it says, but the law is meant to lock up every everyone who trusts in themselves and its enforcer is sin and Satan, our jail ward. Now he's also the accuser of the brethren, which means he's the prosecutor. He's the cop, he's the undercover cop, he's the prosecutor, he's the bailiff, he's the CO, and he's the jail warden. All of them operate under his power and he has the power, according to the law, the law of God to legally imprison us. And he has done that and he has taken advantage of the curse of the law that is all those who depend on themselves and trust in themselves because they decided that Satan knew one of what was best for them instead of God and they ate from the wrong tree instead of depending on the life of God they ate from their own tree or the tree of knowledge of good and evil which is symbolic for the law what I know to be right and wrong and trying to do right and trying not to do wrong Galatians 3 to 23 says before this faith came we were held in custody locked up in prison under the law imprisoned until faith should be revealed. Satan is the jail warden. Now I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you an example of what this looks like. At the garden, Satan is like the dope dealer. Okay, or let's put it this way: he's an undercover cop and the dope dealer all at the same time. And his goal is to entrap you. So you got you got this undercover cop, and he's saying, "Hey man, here's some drugs. Take this drugs, man. Listen, you don't know what you're missing. You don't you don't know what you're missing. They told you it was bad, but it's good, and you need to take this drug." And the moment you take the drug, he's the cop, but he's an undercover cop. The moment you take the drug, he says, got you. And he handcuffs you, takes you to jail. And you're like, man, but you entrapped me. Well, that's his job. He is the entrapper. He is the accuser. And then he's the prosecuting attorney. So he's the undercover cop. He's the snitch. He's the prosecuting attorney, the CEO, and the jail warden. And he wants to imprison you because if he can imprison you and send you to jail, then he can control you in jail and use you in jail and enslave you in jail. He's the warden and the God and his ultimate principle of, of attack and trickery is entrapment. He wants to entrap you. And that's what he did. He entrapped, okay, Adam in the Garden of Eden. He entrapped them. First Eve and then Adam. Let's go on. Satan and God are confused. Now, this idea of God being the jail warden here on earth of Satan. People think, oh, he's the jail warden of hell. No, he's the jail warden of earth. And people don't understand. They're born into sin as his sons and bound to him, sold into slavery for generations by the by Adam. And we are the Adamites who are now victims of what Adam did. Now watch this, 2 Samuel 24, 1. And this happens in life. Everyone who was ever in slavery, somebody sold them into slavery, okay? It, their ancestors sold them into slavery. Somehow they were entrapped into slavery, okay? And yet generations were held in slavery until they were set free. Second Samuel 24 says, again, the anger of the Lord burned against Israel and he stirred up David against them saying, go take a census of Israel and Judah. I'm gonna slow down. And again, the anger of the Lord burned against Israel and he stirred up David against him and incited him, go take a census. Now watch this. There's one verse in the Bible. It's, it's this is the same exact event. Second Samuel 24 verses one says, it was the anger of the Lord that stirred him and incited David. First, uh, Chronicles 21 1 says Satan rose up against Israel to incite David so which one was it it was both it was both but it can be confused because when God is angry and there's an open door for sin Satan takes advantage of that anger he takes advantage of that open door to rule okay he is the ruler of all those who disobey and who have open doors and he is the God of performance and we are imprisoned by performance. And so he takes advantage of that and is ruled in that realm, working hand in hand with God. And God has allowed him to rule in that realm. In fact, he legally rules 
in the realm of the curse of the law and he legally rules in the realm of the anger of the Lord and he legally rules to bring punishment and the punishment of the curse for God. Okay? This is how it works. This is what the Bible teaches about Satan that they don't want to tell you. They say he's just an angel. He's just a rogue angel and he's got a following. No, he he owns everyone on the earth and he owns everything on the earth. He is the king of the kingdoms of the earth. He is the prince of the power of the air. He is the God of the sage. So Satan is not an angel, but Satan is a God. This is what we're concluding with. So you know the power and his function. And only another God, the reason why uh, 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 Christ came to die as a man was to set us free as a man because Satan legally ruled over us. So he became a man so he could set up a covenant and a new Adam to set us free from the curse of the old Adam and set us free from his rulership. Okay, from the God, Satan, who owns the, the world. Now, that should scare people to run to Christ and set, be set free from Satan, who's the God of this world. He's the God of this world, the legal God of this world. And we give him legal power through our performance until we surrender. Surrender from our self-righteousness and surrender from our performance. And the moment we do, we say, Lord, I was trying to myself. I tried, I tried to be a God. I tried to be great. I tried to be good. I tried to depend on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil rather than your life. But I say, I can't. I receive your life now. The moment we surrender is the moment we're translated and born again into the kingdom of God and become a son of God instead of a son of Satan. Majority of the world think that they're free moral agents and that they're not subject to Satan's power and that they're not his sons. They don't know that. They think, oh, I, they, have, they have a choice. They could sell their soul. I could sell my soul to the devil. He already owns your soul. You can't sell what he already owns. Let's go on. Watch this. Second Corinthians 4, 4 says, the God, Theos, of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they might not see the glory of God in Christ. But it's the God, the Theos. God, there's no difference between this God and the most high in the sense of the general name of God, the gods are allowed to be called God. According to Psalm 82, watch my message, the gods, the gods are allowed to be called God. Okay. As we're going to show you, Christ Jesus also confirmed and pointed that out concerning himself. Watch this. First Corinthians 8, 5 says, for even if there are so-called so gods, theos, whether in heaven or earth, as indeed there are many gods, Paul confirmed the gods of old exist. We need to awaken to the reptilians, awaken to the gods of old and the different realms that they ruled under, the prince of Persia. They not only ruled the, 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 the kingdoms of this earth, but also the other planets, okay? That's why Satan took a third of the stars, which means a third of the galaxies are under his rule. And he rules them in the same exact way through proxy, through trickery, but most importantly, the principle of entrapment. And they are entrapped by leaning on and trusting him rather than trusting in the Father and releasing and surrendering themselves in their disobedience to receiving the spirit of our creator. And there they are in rebellion along with him, fighting along with him because he is a gift giver. And his goal is to love them and give them gifts so that they can worship him and he can be worshiped as a God. Acts 17, 23, to an unknown God, I now proclaim you. Now, Paul is using this idea, understanding that the, the Greeks and understanding Greek mythology, which I, I believe, well, I don't believe Satan is actually Zeus in Greek mythology. And he is the, where his throne was, which is where the throne of Zeus was in Pergamon. Revelation talks about that. I have another message on it called 2024, the throne of Satan. It is a prophetic pattern for World War III. Check it out. The throne of Satan. It's got Satan on his throne. Okay, watch this. And I explained that as well, that Satan is uh, actually Zeus biblically. Okay. Acts 17, 23, to an unknown God, I now proclaim you. So he referred to Christ as an un un unknown God in the same sense as the God of this world. These are gods, powerful beings, powerful ones who God has legally allowed to be called God. According to Psalm 82, he says, the son, he says, the B'nai Elohim, the sons of Elohim, B'nai Elohim, he says, I've called you Elohim. But God is the Elohim, the God of the Elohim. The, the terms are synonymous. Of course, Yahweh, we know his name. We know his position. He's the most high. We know he's God Almighty. So we have a revelation of who he truly is, the, the supreme being, which is God Almighty. Okay, but Satan is God. So let's move on. Acts 13. Now, even Paul, when he referred to Yahweh in the sense of bringing them into an understanding of who Yahweh was and the God of Israel and also the Son of God, uh, Jesus Christ, he says the God Theos of the people of Israel. He refers to Yahweh as the God 
of our ancestors because they understood they had a polytheistic idea. They understood that the gods existed. Okay, check out the gods. I talk more on that. Let's go on. So Satan owns the earthlings and they are his children. He's not my daddy. Yes, he is. If you have not been born again and you have not surrendered your life to Christ Jesus, Satan is your daddy. He owns the souls of everyone on this earth and they are in prison to him. Okay. He is the jail warden, the prosecuting attorney. He legally owns them and they are his children and they are filled with his spirit. He is the spirit who is now at work in the disobedience. He is a prevailing spirit and they all have a little bit of his spirit. Just like in Christ, we all have a portion of the Holy Spirit and he is able to orchestrate us and move us accordingly by that spirit, the spirit of Christ in unity and harmony. Satan has the same prevailing spirit and is able to orchestrate his people accordingly in the same exact fashion. He is a spirit, prevailing spirit over the earth, and he is a God over the people of the earth. And if they have his spirit, they are his sons, okay? Let me show you in scripture. First John 3, 10 says, this is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. The devil, Satan, has his children. You were either one of the two, born as a child of God or translated into the kingdom of, of, of our dear son and become the part of the family of God and born again. You have to go from being born of Satan to being born again, a born of Christ. You have to go from the God, Satan, to the God, Jesus Christ. Now, in understanding this gives you a better understanding of why Christ had to die and how we're translated. And we're going to get into how he paid the price, legally paid the price for our punishment. That is another understanding I think is better understood in the context of understanding that God is, I'm sorry, Satan is the God of this earth. John 8, 44 says, you belong to your father, the devil, the dragon, and want to carry out your, your father's desires. Speaking of the Pharisees, we're sons of God, filled with his spirit, a self-righteous spirit that tried to be justified like Cain from the beginning and tried to be justified like Adam and depended on himself and was filled with the spirit of Satan and the spirit of sin and, the, and was bound by the power of sin for generations to come because he chose to depend on himself and become be a God and, and found himself subject to and enslaved by the God Satan, who is much more powerful than all of us and owns the entire earth. Matthew 13, 38 says, the field is the world, the good seed represents the sons of the kingdom and the weeds are the sons of the evil one. There are the sons of God and there are the sons of Christ. There are the son, sons of Satan and the sons of Christ. Biblically, Jesus called anyone who was not his son and the son of the father, he called them a son of Satan or a son of the devil on the earth. Amen. John 10, 33 says, we are not stoning you for any good work, but for blasphemy because you who are a man declare yourself to be God. Jesus replied, is it not written in your law? I have said you are gods. Jesus is referring to Psalm 82. He says, B'nai Elohim are Elohim. If in fact he called them gods and scripture cannot be broken, then what do you say about the one whom the father sanctified and sent in the world? Satan is a God just like Jesus referred to himself as a God, but he is the God who humbled himself, paid the price, sacrificed his life as a man and God simultaneously, but became an Adam that he might lead us out of the slavery that our descendants were in through faith in the grace of God and paved a way and made an addendum to the law. Ephesians 1, 7 says, in him, Jesus, the Lord God, we have redemption, not just from the curse of the law, but from the enforcer, of the curse of the law from Satan. We have been bought back from the one who owned, owned us. And the one who owned us was Satan. Ephesians 1, 7 says, in him we have redemption, not which is forgiveness of sins, that's part of it. But we've been redeemed. Redeemed means to be brought, bought back, ransomed, bought back. We were bought back from Satan, who is the God of this earth and who owns the people of the earth. We were redeemed from his ownership. And the ownership as God of this world who is a reptilian and who leads the dracos and the reptilians and the powerful beings that are cloaked even among us now colossians 3 1 3 or 1 13 says he has set us free from the kingdom of darkness that is the kingdom of satan the god satan and its authority and power and all of satan's power over our life and he has translated us and transferred us into a new kingdom under a new authority and a new power that rules by his spirit and that is the spirit of christ aka the holy spirit so the spirit of 
Satan is cast out of us and we're filled with the Spirit of Christ, who is the God, the Son of God, God Almighty, who sits at the right hand of the Father. And at the consummation of all times, will once he's defeated death, will hand over the kingdom to the Father so that the Father might be all in all. Amen. So I hope this blesses you. We have to understand who Satan truly is, have a true picture of who he is so we can understand who we were redeemed from and what we were redeemed from and also understand our necessity to be redeemed from Satan, who is not just an angel, but who is the God of this world and the children and the, the people of this world are his sons, whom he owns, who he's locked up under the power of sin, which are our chains in a prison planet, which he is the jail warden. God bless you guys. I hope you guys have an amazing week and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching I Believe X. Help us get the word out by liking and sharing this video.